You've seen me tackle this garage multiple times, trying to declutter, clean, organize it, and make it look somewhat aesthetically pleasing. But this time, I swear you guys, it's actually gonna be different because this time I'm actually transforming my garage into a cute, girly, camera-ready workshop where I can work on all of my DIY projects and film videos. I've been doing DIY projects pretty much all my life. If you know, you know. From clothing, to beauty, to home decor, to now all types of holiday props and things for the parties that I throw. But it really wasn't until this year that I actually started experimenting with bigger projects and actually using power tools. I hired Zoe as my personal assistant at the beginning of 2023. And since she already had an interest in woodworking and had a little bit of experience with it and actually owned a couple tools of her own, she was really the main person who encouraged me to branch out and step outside of my comfort zone when it came to DIY projects. Since then, Zoe has been promoted from assistant to producer. I've leveled up from cricket maker to jigsaw, and now it's time for my garage to have a transformation too. I just really need a proper workspace for all of these future DIY projects that I have up my sleeve. <sighs> okay, what a mess. It's a beautiful mess. You think so? It's a mess of creativity and joy. We have done a lot of good projects in here, I will say. It served its purpose, but it just can never catch a break. Mm -mm. Every time I try to clean it out, set it up, get it organized, it's another project that we do in here or another unloading of things from something in the house into here and it just gets filled back up. So that's like the main problem that I'm trying to really solve is like don't have it be a dumping ground anymore mm. and have it be actually like nice storage and a workshop. The issue with a garage not being a dumping space is I think garages are always dumping spaces. But they don't have to be. What if, what if it was like, like we have like an organized dumping space? I'm thinking if like this is your workspace and you park your car, on the other side of your car, we can have like, like, you know, you have these shelves, but we could have maybe a better system to dump things. Well, here's the thing. I have these shelves and these are good, these are good garage shelves, okay? I feel like these are a good investment that I made and I want to keep them and use them. I don't want to go through the whole hoopla of completely getting something else. So I definitely think these can be used over here because mm -hmm. like you said, normally my car is parked right here, but when we're doing projects, like as you see, I yeah. have to leave my car in the driveway because this becomes the work area. But in my mind, the car is parked here, the shelves are all along here. And then that other side is the workshop area. So we no longer have to do all of this because it can be over there. Yeah. And in theory, even right now, like we have all this empty shelf space because we moved so much of my stuff to my storage unit. And some of this like over here should be moved to your storage unit. Most of these sandbags should be moved. This stuff from your birthday party, I think at this point should be moved. There's stuff left over from Christmas. And Halloween. Halloween. There's lights, we got machines. I think we'll just be spending a lot of time going through everything, moving it, getting rid of it, and hopefully giving it a new home. Yeah, but good news is I don't think space is an issue. Now that I have my storage unit, it's not like we're just like overflowing with stuff that we can't fit it in here. We have space. It just needs to be used properly. So it's not just like all over the Floor. More stuff from the Christmas party. Yeah, stuff that just shouldn't even be in here. Like it either goes in the storage unit or it goes on those shelves over there. What about these poles? Those could be taken to the storage unit, but I even feel like once we get it all cleaned up, that can be pushed up against the wall over there and it won't even be a big deal. This whole you know what I'm gonna say? couch that's been sitting here since the playroom makeover, just collecting even more dirt than was already on it. <laughs> and like this Ikea table, this is like, doors for the outdoor kitchen that I never needed. What even is all this stuff? So that yeah. stuff definitely needs to be completely removed and gotten rid of. And there's like more, those little chairs over there. But like for the wood scraps, 
The idea is this will be like a workshop area. So maybe it'll be like storage going along the walls for all like the tools and the paint mm -hmm. and the like cute little containers of things easily accessible so that we're not always asking, where's the tape measure? Where's the hammer? Where's this? Yes. Like nicely visible. We'll have like a little spot where we can have all of our scrap wood nicely. And you know, all of my spray paint cans, like I have a vision of it being very like aesthetic. That's my goal. Space to always park my car space for storage and then a workshop over here. So I made a Pinterest board for my garage inspo, my girly workshop extravaganza. The Barbie dream workshop? Raven's Barbie dream workshop. I was kind of having trouble finding inspo because I feel like I don't know, I don't know anything about workshops and things. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what I'm looking for. I mostly just saved pictures that looked like it had cool organizational ideas on how to store my stuff and then stuff that looked like aesthetic. So there's two main aspects to this transformation. There's the one side of my garage where I actually park my car and that's gonna have some general storage against that far wall. And then there's the other side of my garage where no one ever parks and it usually just becomes a dumping ground for junk. And that's the side that I actually want to transform into my workshop area. And I really wanna make the workshop area cute and on brand for me. It's gonna end up being the backdrop for a lot of my content you guys know I always make content about the DIYs that I do. So far, it's just been my messy garage in the background every single time. But going forward, I want it to be like a cute branded, you know, Raven Elise, something with razzle dazzle so that my content looks cute when I'm filming in that area. But of course, it also needs to be functional. I really like this. This is kind of like my main inspo pick. It's functional storage, but it's done in a really aesthetic way. It's even painted, and then there's like a nice work table and a little stool, and I can imagine filming with that mm -hmm. as the background. It's like Raven's Workshop, and it's like all cute with all my little tools behind me. Yeah. Um, and I like they have wood storage up here. Oh, I didn't even see that. For all the scraps, I think that's really smart. And then like stuff like this, where it's just like so coordinated with the storage stuff. Mm -hmm. Except I do not want to buy all brand new containers. Like I want to use as much of what I already have. Yeah. Right, so I, I like I, this picture too. Yeah, I think the pegboard will be nice. I, I am worried about like where functionality like meets aesthetic. I, where functionality meets aesthetic. That's going to be our ooh, tagline. I just feel like that would be really hard to maintain and keep up with like through projects and stuff. Granted, I'm not like an organization DIY queen girly pop. I have <laughs> Having closet, nice I things that look in. nice take upkeep. It takes effort to keep anything looking nice. Yeah. in life and either you're gonna put in the effort and put it back how it goes or you're not and it's gonna uh -huh. get messed up unfortunately before we can work on bringing this cute workshop idea to life we have a lot of cleaning decluttering and sorting to do to sweep or not to sweep <laughs> to sweep you should do back exercises I really don't know where to start. I just don't like how everything is just on the floor and in the way. And I don't want to create like a bigger mess by like taking everything down and now it's just more stuff all over the floor. But I guess maybe that's just inevitable. I would like to still be able to park my car in here in the meantime while we work on this too. So I don't want to just like cover the space in junk. Mm -hmm. I think it might be helpful if we like kind of put the shelves where they're gonna be. Where are they gonna be? That's a great question. I mean, if, if we think about how we did the playroom in the craft makeover. We literally took everything out and dumped it on the floor and went through it. It might mean you won't be able to use your garage in the way it was meant, but that has been a productive solution in the past. I guess I'll park outside for the a next few days. Year Now that I'm looking at all this stuff, I really have leveled up my DIY game. <laughs> Basically in the last year that you've been working here, I've accumulated a lot more like tools and supplies and stuff. Yeah, I think I'm very motivated to do like big DIY projects and you have really great ideas. Oh, thanks. You, you do. And so it's really fun for me to like make them happen. 
because I now own things like PVC pipe cutter. Newest purchase, laser level. One organizational thing that I definitely need to buy some sort of solution for is all the screws and nails and things because I have a lot of different kinds now and this is not gonna cut it. And this is, this is only like one small section of it. There's that over there and then that other big container. It would be hell to separate them all out. My favorite solution is to dump them all in one container and then when you need something, go fish around for all the ones that you need. And so it's only a problem when you have to encounter it. <laughs> Comment down below if that seems like a good idea. Five Nights at Freddy vibes. <laughs> Table legs. You never know, you might need two IKEA extendable table legs. They're extendable, that's pretty important. Are you gonna give away the top too? I could keep it and buy two more legs. And put it where? In storage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna buy two more legs so I can put it in storage. Because when you need a table, I don't need it all the time, but when I do. And it's easy to take apart and put together. No, that's so. stupid. A folding table would be a better investment. Oh, we, and we, I still need to buy you a folding table. Look at that guys, growth. I'm letting go. Wow, learning to let go with Raven Elise. I've got all these snow toys from the snow pit from the Christmas party. It was a big kit. It could also be used for sand, I guess, technically, but I don't have a sandbox and it doesn't really snow here. And honestly, I feel like Zaya's kind of too old for this kind of stuff anyway. I think this is donate, but not this bucket that it's in. It's wet, ew! <laughs> How is this still wet? I don't know. Question. I bought this because I was gonna repaint it and put it as decoration in your room because you know how you have like some airplanes and clouds and stuff. Do you still want me to do that or should I donate it? Still do it. Still do it? Okay. Okay, we're keeping it. I'm donating my smaller cornhole set and the bags that go with it. It's perfectly fine, but I have my big custom one that I like much better and I don't need both. Garage decluttering day two. Yesterday we sorted through these two shelves worth of items mainly. This stuff still needs to be sorted through. We also made progress on this side with getting rid of donation items and we got rid of the couch today so that cleared up a lot of space. So we have so much room for activities now. It's gonna be the workshop area, I think. But all this stuff still needs to be sorted through. And I wanna start like putting the shelves where they're actually gonna go. But I think we're gonna start today with these two shelves. Got a shelf cleared off. Well, kind of just moved stuff around, but then there was a lot of stuff that just needs to go in my storage unit. So I've got that piled up over here and we'll just take that to the storage unit. Moving on to this shelf, which originally was like all like pool, summer, backyard related things mostly. Everything is so dusty from the Playroom Ikea sanding. Fiasco. <laughs> Extravaganza. So I feel like we need to like- Wear masks. Get a rag. <laughs> a wet rag would do us some good. So I'm checking the cabinets out here with my outdoor kitchen because I know I had like some miscellaneous similar type items just not organized throughout here too. And this is good storage space for stuff that like you use on the patio or you use with the pool. So I might put certain things out here, but I just need to kind of like, now, <laughs> like what is this? Candle full of water. And my gardening stuff that I need to consolidate. Just like kind of judge this stuff up a little bit. a kid's underwater camera that I forgot existed that we never used, that we should use. Oh, I have a, a floating pool pong table that I have designated pool pong cups for. So I'll keep that out here. So over here is where I've been keeping like the pool toys, but these baskets are not outdoor sturdy and they're like falling apart and it's just not the best way to like look at this basket. I can't even pick it up. It's like all broken. I want to just move all this stuff into the garage. I don't think it's good just having it constantly sitting outside in the elements. Some of it is really yucky and needs to be thrown away for sure. Check 
change of plans, I'm gonna move the pool chemical stuff over to the patio cabinet storage, just so it's closer by the pool. My thought process is bucket of toys you play with dry outside and bucket of toys you play with wet in the pool. So this is water sprayer versus these yard games that you just play with in the grass. Besides the fact that I'm doing this whole new workshop idea, the other thing that makes this garage makeover different from all the other ones is that I actually have a storage unit now. My garage used to always just be full to the brim with holiday decor, party stuff, props that I've made, and that was the biggest reason why I could never keep it clean. I just had way too much stuff in there all the time, so it was constantly overflowing and there was no way to keep it looking nice. But now that I have a storage unit, I'm actually able to take all of my seasonal things, big bulky props, stuff that I just don't use that often or that I only use for certain holidays and certain events. I can take all of that stuff, load it up, take it to the storage unit. It has its own place, so it's not taking up space in my garage. So now I'm just using my garage to hold more household things, things that I reach for and use more often, you know, stuff that goes with my pool, stuff that I might just use for any just because occasion. It's just things that I wanna have close by that I don't wanna have to drive to my storage unit to get. So Zoe kind of decluttered, consolidated these bins, which have more like general party stuff in it, like stuff that I don't want to put in my storage unit because I use it more often. It's like balloons and little decor things, the balloon pump, just random stuff like that. All my costume related stuff. And then we got this random tote of moving tarps, moving blankets. That doesn't really go with this section, but it just fit there. So this is kind of a hodgepodge shelf, definitely not very aesthetic, but I'm not really too worried about this side of the garage being as aesthetic because this is just like the storage side. Dry backyard toys, cool toys, and then the projector. We need to like, I guess, disassemble the projector poles all the way and put those away up here. I mean, I don't have a lot of options. If I wanted to do sort of my like pegboard backdrop with work table in front, I mean, this is really the only uh, option over here mm -hmm. of a ways to put it because, you know, this wall is smaller and I got the water heater thingy over here in the way anyway. This is obviously the best wall to put that on, which means we don't want these right in front of it if I want my pegboard. Yeah, I think we should put like one on each side and then in the middle, headboard with a movable workbench. When we did a garage makeover video before, part of what I did was I added these things to the wall over here. I think I had the ladder hooked on mm -hmm. and some other things. We didn't properly do it into the studs, so they fell out of the wall real easily. And then also I just didn't end up using it like that for storage. So I ended up taking them all out. Really bad patch job on the holes. We need to sand this down, fix it, perhaps an accent wall of paint. As far as painting this wall all the way to the edge, it's gonna be a little tricky to get behind all this. We've done harder things. So this whole wall would be painted. What color? I don't know. Y'all know my, my color is pink out of all colors. It wouldn't we make sense. We have plenty of pink paint. But it's like pink, really? Another pink wall? But like, what would I, why would I do blue, purple, green? I don't like those colors like that. That's not my color, that's not my brand color. This is where I'm filming for my brand. Let's use your multiple gallons of half-used pink paint. And just mix them all together. Yes. Into a Franken pink. It'll be like a Sophia Nygaard video. Yeah. A pink wall in my garage, is that too much? I think it would be cute if I had like some little sign that says like Raven's Workshop or Ooh. something. Stuff hanging on the pegboard. Work table is here, but it's like movable. 
So in case if we want to face this way or we need to move it for whatever reason. So we had these pots over here, but I need to prioritize long term storage where it's like you use it, you put it back, you use it, you put it back. I want to use these and put them out. So yeah. they don't need to be taking up that space right there. If I can use it for the shelf. Because I'm annoying, we're gonna switch the shelves because I feel like this is like outdoor entertainment, which goes with pool stuff. So they should be next to each other. So we're gonna swap out the. Oh no, it's tipping. No, it's not. Day two, progress check, workshop side and the storage side slash the side that I will be parking on. Not done yet, but good progress so far. I thought it would be really cute if we had branded RETV work jumpsuits to wear whenever we do our DIY projects. It's called a boiler suit, like these long sleeve, long pant jumpsuits. I wanted pink boiler suits for us to wear. Couldn't really find them online in the right size and the right color. Some of them were super expensive. So I found these plain white work uniform suits on Amazon and I'm like, maybe I can just dye them pink and then we can make it a fun little personalized, customized DIY. So I have three suits here. They are polyester and cotton, so they should be, you know, easy to dye, I think, hopefully. The last time I needed to dye something, I used this pot. It was a whole crazy thing. I was in the shower. I burned myself. <laughs> it did not go well. We were going to try that again, but then I saw on the back of the bottle of the dye, it says you can actually do it in your washing machine, which sounds kind of scary because I'm like, is it going to dye my washing machine? Is it going to leave dye in there and then it's going to dye my clothes next time I use it? But apparently you just like run like a cleaning cycle after you're done and it's fine. I watched a lot of YouTube videos, so fingers crossed I don't regret this and Hopefully it like works in the first place. But I got four bottles of pink dye. I really wanted this color, which is rose quartz, but I couldn't find enough of it. So I got one rose quartz and three petal pinks, and I'm just gonna mix them all together. Also got the fixative so that it sticks, hopefully. I jokingly brought this idea up to Zoe a few months ago, actually, because we've been working on bigger projects, you know, painting, especially with the playroom makeover and the amount of painting and sanding and stuff that we did throughout this process. We were constantly needing to be like in our work clothes or our paint clothes and neither of us really have like designated paint clothes and so I said to Zoe I was like wouldn't it be cute like we should have uniforms like we need to have Raven Elise uniforms for days like this whenever we're painting or working on messy stuff and I jokingly said to her like I'm gonna order us some uniforms and it's gonna be a requirement that you have to wear this uniform to work and she was like oh but that actually might be cute if we had something to wear so then that got me thinking and I was like hmm I wonder if I can actually find something and I love a cute coordinated moment so we're gonna have pink jumpsuits to actually wear and she's excited about it she thinks it's cute she says she's gonna wear it that's one thing I love about Zoe she's always down for the color she always is down for my crazy ideas. I feel like a lot of people would kind of be like, mm, like I don't want to wear this bright pink jumpsuit, but I feel like she's actually going to wear it and it's actually going to be cute. You're supposed to boil water and pour the dye and make like a diluted boiling dye mixture and then you dump that into your washing machine. So for the amount of fabric that we're trying to dye, we came to the conclusion we needed 16 cups of boiling water. Got that going. This isn't a tutorial, it's an experiment. Okay, anywho, all dye going in. I think there are better things to use than straight Mio. Yeah, but if you have Mio, you just squirt a little bit and it's sour and you know. Anyways, um, <laughs> next you're supposed to add salt. 
how the hell are we gonna carry this to the laundry room? Very carefully. It's gonna be heavy, hot, and it's to the very brim of the pot. Next, we must wet down the fabric, the garments, before we place into the washing machine. So using my handy dandy laundry room sink, just gonna soak these down. You wanna get dyed too? You wanna be pink? For um, OSHA reasons, for employee protection reasons, I feel as though I should handle the hot pot. You burned yourself last I time. I burned myself last time, but at least if I burn myself, I don't have liabilities. I, I am not allowed to sue you if you burn yourself. I won't sue my, oh, and now it's boiling. Lid, mitts. Are you, are you sure you wanna do this? You got this. Slowly and carefully. I'm worried about my feet. If, what if it splashes? Don't worry about your feet. I believe in myself. I would be running right now. <laughs> so I, I, if I do it faster, there's less It's just time sloshy. I don't want it to slosh on me. We made it, but I need something to put it down on. Just put it on the floor right there so I can get my bearings. This is gonna be hard to pour like the... Oh, no. Just get it all the way in there and turn it. I can do it. It's gonna be hot, like... Yeah. You gotta like really be... So you gotta turn it fast. Maybe we should... No. <laughs> I, I, I believe in myself. No! This is scary. You said no <laughs> as you handed me the oven mitts. This is dangerous. Get Put it, it in deep there. in there so it doesn't come out. Ew. Don't burn your arms. I won't. My glasses are fogging up. I can't even see what's happening. <laughs> Put it on extra hot. Right? Yep, let her go. And hope for the best. Okay, the wash cycle is done. Moment of truth, I'm scared. Solid even coverage? I think it worked! A cute color. Looks like pretty good coverage everywhere. Let's check the other ones. I was worried it wasn't gonna like disperse and like cover all three of them all the way. This one has a has some weirdness going on, not gonna lie. I see a, a bit of splotchiness. Good enough, right? I mean, it's a work jumpsuit. It's literally gonna get messed up. Like, it's gonna get covered in paint. Okay, so now what I'm supposed to do is put it back in there and do another rinse cycle with the fixative. Ah, uh, you know what I just realized? We forgot to put a little bit of dish detergent in there. You're supposed to put like a little bit of soap in the mix. I don't know what that does, and I don't know if that's part of the reason why it came out like a little bit splotchy, but hopefully with the fixative and everything, and then I'll put it in the dryer, hopefully they look good when they're dry. Jumpsuits are dry, and they're pink. Yeah, honestly, I don't really even see the splotchiness as bad anymore. I think they look good. Barbie boiler suit. <laughs> There's actually like this flap, this like pleat with a seam right here that I didn't realize that we definitely want to work within that. So that means we really do, yeah, it is 13 inches, which is what we were thinking. I wanted to do sort of like a patchwork, a varsity letter situation on the back of the jumpsuits. So we went to Walmart and found three fabrics from the fabric section, different pink pattern fabrics, floral, this little geometric floral design, and then this like gingham, I think is what it's called type plaid, but we couldn't find a fourth fabric that went with the collection, but we went to the pajama section in Walmart and we found this little nighty. 
that had the right color and type of print to kind of like go with the vibes. So I'm like, we could just use the fabric off of here. Hopefully this one's got more stretch to it. So hopefully it works and it's not difficult to work with. But my thought process is I'll just cut a panel off the bottom hem. That way the dress is still wearable and I will still sleep in it. So it doesn't go to waste. I am going to start with the easier regular fabric though. I watched some YouTube tutorials, which is what I always do. You guys always ask me like, how do I know how to do all this stuff on the Cricut? Everything's on YouTube. I really don't know what I'm doing either. This is my first time trying this technique, first time using fabric with my Cricut maker. I technically don't really even have the right blade in my machine. So hopefully it cuts through the fabric well, but the idea is that you take this light sewable iron-on adhesive, also from Walmart, and it's basically just an iron-on backing that you iron on to the back of your fabric to make it iron onable. So I'm basically making my own iron on patches from scratch. I'm gonna make all the R's on one fabric, all the E's on one fabric, all the T's, all the V's, and it'll be like a cute mismatch effect. Then from the YouTube tutorials I watched, apparently you get the best cut if you leave the paper backing on here, put it paper side down like this and cut it out like that. I think for the most part it worked. Got a little spot right here that's kind of stuck. Wow, it's a little frayed, but there's that. and we still have a fully functioning nightgown because it's still long enough, right? <laughs> Barely. This knit fabric is definitely reacting differently than the woven fabric. This is like a stretchy, like jersey knit type vibe. It still worked. Standard cotton woven fabrics like this are the best to use. So they're on there but obviously they could use a little contrast to help the pink on pink stand out so you can read the letters better. So that's where the kind of like embroidery stitch around the edge comes in. Now, I feel like there's two ways I could achieve this. By hand with embroidery thread and a needle and do a whip stitch by hand all the way around each letter, which I've never really done before and I don't know how difficult and how long that would take. It sounds very tedious. Or with my sewing machine, same idea, but let the sewing machine do the work, except it might be hard to control the sewing machine going around all these little angles. So both sound hard in their own way. For some reason, I feel like I might do better with the sewing machine than by hand, so I kind of want to try it. Worst case scenario, you can take the stitches out. I think I'll try it. Okay, so I got my machine threaded. I calibrated it to get the right kind of stitch that I wanted. I had to kind of play around with my settings for the width, the length, and then I set it to zigzag stitch. So I did it on a little sample piece here. That was when it was like too much, and then I made it too spread out, and then I made it a little bit wider this way, and then I got it, I think, how I wanted there. So I know my machine can do the right kind of stitch. The question is, can I control my machine to go around the letters nicely. I don't know how long it took me to do the R. 
my first try, but it took me 30 minutes to do the E. It's a little better than the R, but still not perfect, but like good enough from a distance. I have two more letters left, so in theory it's gonna take me like an hour more to finish. Meanwhile, Zoe is working on her jumpsuit. She ironed her letters on and she is trying to hand stitch, hand embroidery. It's a whip stitch. Mm -hmm. Are you using the full thickness of the thread? Yeah, I separated it and so I took three threads and I folded it in half. So six threads, which is the full thread. And I'm just doing a little whip stitch. I would say my stitches are getting better. These are kind of bumpy and I was having trouble pulling all of the thread through evenly. I think it still looks cute. It's handmade. It's rustic, it's DIY. Rustic DIY patchwork. Your grandma sewed it for you by yep. hand using her old quilt. Over time, like as we add little customized details and we get like paint, and everything on it and it gets kind of dirty. I think It'll then the look will really come together. Yeah, it's supposed to be messy. Yeah. Obviously the machine moves a lot faster and I have to do on the stitches for you and in theory it's gonna keep them nice and straight and even. The hard part about the machine is that it gets confusing when you're trying to turn the corner but still make the lines match up and not like skip a space. And I kept getting confused with like how to properly turn the corner and where you want the needle to land to be in the right spot to do your next line. It's hard to explain, but that's like the hardest part about it. And then also working with a full long sleeve, long pant jumpsuit, I have to shove the whole jumpsuit through this little hole and turn it around to be able to like turn the corner and then trying to hold it straight. So it's kind of bunching up a little bit and it's a little wiggly and some of my corners don't look as good as the others, but you know, it's there, it's something. Not my best work, but this is my first time. I'm a beginner and I'm really just making this up, so I'm proud of myself, okay? <laughs> After how many hours? Two, three hours altogether, it's done. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. I have a lot of little puckers, which I'm um, thinking back on it, you're supposed to stabilize the underside with something to keep it from doing that, and I don't have any sort of added stabilization or interfacing on the inside of mine. From a distance, it looks like the general idea I was going for. So I'm not mad at it. <laughs> Here's mine with my machine embroidery on the back. Here's how it fits. It's meant to go over your clothes. So I have yoga pants underneath and it just zips up on top, buttons up, you got pockets. And then when we're like painting and working, we don't have to worry about messing up our clothes. This will be our designated work outfit that can get paint on it or whatever. And I'm glad I got the small tall cause the length is good on me. So the question is, I did this one with the machine. Zoe did this one. She got one letter done with the hand stitching and it actually looks really cute. I'm actually kind of jealous. <laughs> I kind of wish I did mine like that because it gave it like a cool it's like puffy. effect and it looks very intentional. Like it's not like perfectly straight, but it doesn't look like it was supposed to be, you know? So I think that turned out really cute, but I will say it took her a long periodical time to just do this one letter. So this was faster. She's gonna have to like take this home and work on it for days to get it done, I'm sure. But we have one more, which just has the letters ironed on, but it needs the stitching. So question for you guys, should we do the machine stitching or should we do the hand stitching to finish the third one? Comment down below. I am a very visual person. Sometimes it's hard for me to imagine things just in my own imagination. I can't really tell if certain things are gonna look good together. So it's always very helpful for me to create some type of photoshopped rendering visual of any space that I'm working on. So here's the plan for my big garage workshop transformation. First things first, I wanna paint the walls and I think it would be really cute and kind of go with the whole DIY artistic creative theme and make it a very textured brush strokey, just like creative, you know, let loose, let the paint guide you <laughs> type of mural on the wall, of course, in shades of pink number one because I love pink pink is my color what other color would it be but also because I have a lot of leftover pink paint that I just want to use up and I feel like this sort of splotchy multicolored 
paintbrush mural effect would actually be perfect because then I can use all my different shades of pink that I already own and just sort of mix and match it all together to create a cool effect. Have I ever done this effect before? No. Do I really know exactly how to achieve it? Exactly how it looks in my Pinterest inspo? No. But honestly, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it. It's supposed to be messy. It's supposed to be artistic. It's really like a workshop slash art studio type vibe that I'm going for. Hopefully y'all see the vision. Then one of the main things that I wanna invest in is this work table that I saw at Home Depot. It's like a real legit work table. It's not like a full blown huge toolbox setup, but it does have a little drawer in it. It's adjustable so you can make it lower or higher and it's just a really nice sturdy work table on wheels that will be much better than the little baby Ikea table that we have been using before. The other main thing that I wanna do is put a pegboard up on the wall. I have a lot of inspo pics of pegboards where they have their tools and their supplies all nicely displayed, hung up on the pegs. You can even add like little pops of decor, like artwork or quotes or plants or just little cute things to sort of mix it in and make it more cute in the background behind me as I'm working at my work table when I'm filming. And then also to make it cute, I really wanna have some sort of sign up on the wall. I don't know if I'm gonna make it say, RETV workshop or Raven's workshop or just make it say Raven Elise or something like that just to again help with like branding for content when I'm filming you know you can imagine me filming like my TikToks and you kind of see that in the background above my head. I already have a neon sign in my office and then I got a custom wooden sign made for Zaya in her bedroom off of Etsy but Zoe is convinced that we can make our own custom wooden sign. Like we could buy a piece of wood and we could cut out the letters ourselves. I'm a little skeptical about that, but we're gonna try. I know they have individual wooden letters that you could just buy from like Hobby Lobby, Michaels. I've purchased those before for different things for parties and stuff, but it's not as custom, you know? And it would be more fun to make my own, you know, it could be like a cute thing where maybe it's cursive letters all connected and like more of a logo versus just like, individual wooden letters that anybody can get at a store. I don't know, I haven't fully figured that out yet. If y'all have any ideas or suggestions for what would make like a really cute sign to put on the wall, let me know. And then lastly, the main thing is the organization. I have those two metal shelves and I am gonna keep those, but I just wanna reorganize them, get some new bins and boxes and you know, label it really nice and just make it look real sleek and neat and not junky how it looks now. I've decided that I don't wanna do anything to the flooring. I know a lot of people do those really nice epoxy floors in their garage and that does sound really nice except I've already destroyed my garage floors you know, working on all the messy projects that we've been working on. So I just don't think it's worth it to put a nice new expensive floor in my garage knowing that I'm about to be doing more messy projects in there and painting and spray painting and doing all those things. Yes, you can always lay down a tarp, but inevitably stuff gets off the tarp and it gets on the floor and I just don't think it's worth it. I think it's fine to just have the regular concrete and just let it get dirty. That way I don't have to care if something spills, if I get paint on it, who cares? It's a workshop, you know, again, kind of like workshop art studio vibes. Just let the floor be the floor, you know? So yeah, that is the plan, at least for now, at least for a starting point. I feel like I am still very much so on a journey of discovery when it comes to all of these DIY projects and learning more about power tools and learning different skills and stuff like that. So as I add more things to my arsenal, I probably will buy more tools and buy more things that I wanna add to my workshop and kind of maybe rearrange and add to it. But at least for now, I at least just wanna have like a usable workspace and make it kind of cute. So let me know what you guys think of my plan. Let me know if you have any ideas of different things that I could add to it. And I'll see you guys in the next video for the full transformation.